And so everyone's 100% of the time on the neural network itself, the structure, the loss function, and all the pieces of that, and data set is fixed. And my reaction is to it is strong only because when you're in the industry, you will iterate a lot on the data set as well. So that's not to say that the algorithm design and modeling um, is not there. It's just, uh, it's the second order effect of what you would be doing. It's sort of the second term in the equation. As I said, it also varies per area. So I would say in robotics, it's much less certain how to lay out the problem, how you structure it, how you arrange it, what is the data set, what labels are you collecting, at what level of abstraction, huge design space, and not obvious what works yet. But I would say that's less the case in just simple image recognition. I like that you expanded up upon that. The thing I'm actually curious about is how this relates to this term you coined a little while ago, software 2.0, because it seems very related. Yeah, exactly. So software 2.0 was kind of like a blog post I published a few years ago, and it was just making the point that, you know, of course we have a lot of uh, software that's driving large parts of society and automation in the space of information and so on. A lot of the software right now is written by people. Uh, so, you know, banking systems and, you know, internet search and things like that. Everything is sort of algorithms developed by people in principle understood and orchestrated in a certain way. It seems to me basically that with progress and deep learning, you can sort of think of that neural network as a piece of software, but the software was not written by a person. The software was written by an optimization. And so it's kind of like a new programming paradigm that we are not directly writing the algorithm. We are programming the data sets and the algorithm really is an outcome of this training process or this compilation, which would be sort of the equivalent in typical software. So you would take your source code and you would compile it and get a binary. So here the source code are the data sets. The compilation is the training on the neural network and your binary is the final neural net, the weights. And to me, what's happening in society right now is that we are, well, number one, a lot of software that we couldn't have written before is now possible to write like image recognition systems. But also, a lot of software that used to be written by instruction, software 1.0 style, can now be ported over to this more powerful paradigm to software 2.0. And the programming sort of looks different. And the reason I wrote that post is that it's a little bit of a call to arms to all the engineers in that we've been programming in the software 1.0 paradigm for four or five decades. And we have a huge amount of infrastructure to help us program in this paradigm. So we have IDEs that help me write code. They point out bugs. They do syntax highlighting. There's a huge amount of software infrastructure we've built to help us program. But this is not yet the case in this new programming paradigm. So we have to develop completely new tools around data set curation, monitoring, the deployment of these neural networks, the iteration, the fine tuning, everything that goes into programming this new paradigm is an uncharted territory. The tools that we have to iterate on these data sets are extremely primordial and I think can be improved a lot. And so really the post was about pointing out that this is not just some kind of a classifier in machine learning. This is actually a restructuring of how we write software and people have to take it seriously and we have to borrow a lot of what we've done with software 1.0 infrastructure and that helped us program and we have to port equivalents into working with neural nets because a lot of software will start to look like weights in neural net. It won't be C++ or Python or whatnot. And would you say at this point, when you talk about this neural nets effectively being the program to build a self-driving car, is it just a neural net that's been trained with a lot of data or are there still other components? Yeah, that's a really good question. So in the car, there are both. Images enter in the beginning, right? And we have pixels of an image telling us fundamentally what's out there in the world. And then neural networks are doing some portion of the recognition. So they're telling you, hey, there's a stop sign, person, etc. But you can't just directly drive on person, stop sign, etc. You have to actually write some logic around how do you take those intermediate sort of representations and predictions and you want to avoid the pedestrian and you want to stop the stop sign. And so there's still a lot of software 1.0 code sitting on top of the neural net. And uh, that code is basically reacting to the predictions uh, so that it speeds up, slows down, turns the wheel to stay in the lane line markings and so on. What I have seen in the history of the team since I joined in four years ago is that, and this is also why I think, is, is that really we've been porting a lot of the functionality from the software 1.0 land into the neural network. And so originally, the neural networks would only make predictions, for example, for a single image, and they would tell you, okay, there's a, there's a piece of a road edge. But we actually don't just have a single image, we have eight images, right? Uh, coming from eight different cameras that are surrounded in the vehicle. So every image independently predicts little pieces of road edges and curves, 
but there needs to be something above it that stitches it up into a three-dimensional sort of bird's eye view of what's happening around the vehicle. And that was all done in software developed by people. So you take road edges from here, you project them out, road edges from all the cameras, project them out, stitch them up across boundaries. And then over time, you need to also stitch them up and track them and make it sort of temporally continuous. And all that was written by people. And what we've done since then is the neural network has engulfed a lot of the pieces of the engineering. So the neural networks that are in the car today will not make a prediction per image. They will make prediction directly in the bird's eye view. So they will say, okay, I've seen these eight images. And from that, I can see that the road edges are this way around the car. And also I've seen the images over time and I've done the tracking. And having accumulated information from all those frames, here's actually what the world looks like around you. And so pieces of the software 1.0 code are being engulfed by the neural net and it's taking on more and more responsibility in the stack. And maybe at the end of the day, this can all just be a neural net. So maybe there's a very little room for engineering. Um, maybe the images just come in and what comes out is just what you really want, which is the steering and the acceleration. Easily said, hard to do, but that is the final conclusion, I would say, of, of this kind of a transition. And there's very little software written by people. It's just a neural net that does the whole thing. Yeah, that's the holy grail, I would say. We are dropping new interviews every week, so subscribe to The Robot Brains on whichever platform you listen to your podcasts. Oh, and feel free to drop us a review and share our episodes with anyone you think would like to learn more about AI, robotics, and the people bringing them into the real world. Now, when people think about neural nets, often part of the reaction is, at least in, in the early days, was it's hard to understand what they're doing. And, and here you are putting a neural net as part of the decision-making system for driving people, which is, of course, I mean, a very uh, risky thing if the autopilot makes mistakes, right? So how do you build confidence in the system? I imagine you have early rollouts sometimes in, in your own cart. How do you decide you're willing to, to try it out? Maybe directly engineered code is in, is in charge of a lot of the, the stack. But I think it gives a full sense of understanding of the entire system because ultimately this can be hundreds of thousands of lines of code. So yes, options, but this is a very complex dynamical system. And I think you may have a false impression that you actually understand the system, even though you understand like the individual components. I would say really what it comes down to is you want a very robust process for uh, really testing the whole and subjecting it to a huge amount of evaluation, maybe both in for all the individual components making sure that, okay, the detection itself works and all the little pieces of the neural network individually by themselves, but then also end-to-end -end integration tests. And you just want to, to test the system and you want to do this whether or not a neural net is in charge and you want to subject it to say a huge amount of simulation expected. And also of course, through driving. And so we have a large QA team that uh, drives uh, the car, you know, verifies that everything is working you know, as well as possible. And so we have a number of mechanisms by which we test these systems. Another one that's big for us is uh, shadow mode releases. So you can deploy the functionality, but it's not wired up to control. It's just making predictions, but it's not actually like acting. It's there just uh, silently observing and making predictions. And then uh, we sort of test it out without it actually driving the car. And so in some cases you can also do that. So to me, this is just basically the idea that we understood the previous software is false. And fundamentally, you just need extremely good evaluation. In those evaluations, I'm curious, has ever any of the testers or you experienced something they're really surprised by? And like, wow, this car is smarter than I thought. Um, <laughs> I mean, basically every time it drives me around in the latest uh, full cell driving beta builds and just the emergent properties of how it handles different uh, situations. Like there's a bicyclist in an oncoming vehicle. And if you program it properly and the neural network works very well, they'll get these emergent behaviors where it does the right thing. So I would say like every drive,